Hello, and a very warm welcome to our online Christmas carol service. We begin in prayer. God, our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, grant that as she looked for his coming as our Saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our Judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, when you came to this earth as a little child and lay in the manger at Bethlehem, the angels sang for joy and proclaimed glory to God in the highest. As we now celebrate your birth these hundreds of years later, we too would praise you and be glad. Accept our worship and the thanksgiving of our hearts. Comfort all those who are especially struggling this Christmas time and bring us at the last to your eternal joy, where you live and reign in the glory of God the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the deep darkness, on them has light shined. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. 
of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and for evermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. O holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took his wife, but knew her not, until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus.
the promise of a coming king, the hope of all the earth to dwell within our broken world, the Savior in a manger, rejoice. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Cornelius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to his firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Shepherds watch their flocks by night All seated on the ground The angel of the Lord came down And glory shone around Fear not, said he, for mighty dread Had seized their troubled mind Glad Joy I bring to you and all men. 
Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. I wonder what you'd say if I asked you what there is in common between the months of November 1948, June 1982, and July 2013. The answer? It's when our nation's new king and likely future kings were born. Not that many will remember Charles's birth to the then Princess Elizabeth in November 1948. Rather more will have some recollection of the announcement of Princess Diana's giving birth to William. Or more recently, the then Duchess of Cambridge presenting a brief glimpse of her son Prince George to the world's media. Nowadays, at least one photograph seems obligatory, plus press releases and social media posts as well. In contrast, the account of our Lord's coming into the world, of course, comes from a time before all those methods of communication had been developed. And yet, 2,000 years later, it's still being remembered and celebrated in a way in which, for all their merits, Charles and William's and George's birth is very unlikely to be remembered to, in two millennia time, however noteworthy or notorious their lives might prove to be. That might be partly to do with the extra details associated with Jesus' coming, a virgin birth, angelic visitations, a star appearing to direct travellers from the east. Our first reading spelled out what is even more astonishing. The Bible's claims about Jesus' identity and what he will achieve. Isaiah prophesying, For to us a child is born, to us his son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. 
of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and for evermore in September Charles III became the constitutional monarch not just of the UK but of Canada New Zealand Australia Antigua and Barbuda the Barber the Bahamas, Belize, Grenada, Jamaica, Papua New Guinea, St. Kitts, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Solomon Islands and Tuvalu. At the height of the British Empire, Queen Victoria used variously the titles of Queen of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, Countess of Balmoral, Lancaster and Kent, and most contentiously, Empress of India as well. But even those titles claim only a relatively small proportion of the globe within their rule. Whereas in Jesus' case, verse 7 tells us, of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. Christians believe that one day Jesus will return to fully establish his perfect rule over the whole of the earth. But even before that, through the last 2,000 years, the number of people who consider themselves Christians, claiming Jesus as their Lord and Master, has kept on increasing. From the small handful who acknowledged him at his birth, to the only slightly bigger number who began the Christian church just after his death and resurrection, to the worldwide faith that we see today. A couple of weeks ago, much of our media were reporting the statistic arising from the 2021 census saying that those claiming a Christian faith in the UK had fallen from the previous figure of just over half of the population to slightly under that 50%. And that reflects the reality that most of us will be aware of, of younger generations on the whole in this country less likely to want to be recorded as Christian believers more churches closing locally than opening as well. But that continuing downturn in the Western world has been more than countered by the increasing number of people claiming a faith worldwide, which is now estimated at just over 2 billion. And the reason for the continuing attraction of the figure of Jesus well, even just in this one prophecy, it points to some key aspects of Jesus' ministry and identity that continue to keep me convinced, for one. For he is wonderful counsellor, giving guidance and direction for life. Mighty God, the Bible's conviction being that the one whose birth we celebrate isn't just an ordinary citizen or even just an ordinary king-to-be, but God himself come to us, which means he is also everlasting father, providing a care that will never end, and prince of peace too. Although the full extent of his peace and indeed the fullness of all his future blessings are still to come, here and now giving a measure of personal peace to each believer, and very often making a real difference to communities which acknowledge him as Lord as well. As you'll be aware, we don't really know the month or even the year that the Lord Jesus was born in. The 25th day of December is something akin to our UK monarch's official birthday. And though it could conceivably have taken place exactly 2,022 years ago, most scholars' best guesses are around four, five, six years earlier than that. But what makes his birth still worth celebrating is that in Jesus, our God has indeed come to us. And that he not only made a difference to those who saw and followed him 2,000 years ago, but that he still transforms the lives of the many people who claim him as Lord and King today. Amen.
blessing. May the eagerness of the shepherds, the joy of the angels, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you care for today and evermore. Amen. <laughs>